Hey guys, what's up? So recently I posted a Last of Us tutorial going through how I recreated a scene from the show. And I thought I could show you all how I did the water sim that I used in that tutorial. So let's jump into it. Okay, so this is a scene we're working with. Overall, it's very simple. I just have a water material, which is put on a simple plane. Um, some static meshes just to give the background some character and then a character that is from Mixamo. So everything here, the character and the animations are free from Mixamo. I'm just using a walking animation as well as a character that Mixamo gives you for free as well. Uh, for the water material, you can use any water material you wanna use. Um, it doesn't really matter. However, if you do wanna use this water material, I have it linked below via Gumroad. Uh, I'm selling it for just a dollar. So if you want the material, it's very easy to use or to support me, feel free to grab it. If not, use any other water material you want. This method works for, with anything. Now, to do this, you're gonna have to use Blender. Don't freak out, I will teach you through the entire process, and truthfully, it is very simple to do. So, uh, to get started, the first thing we need to do is, if you haven't already, set up some sort of sequence with an animation in that sequence, so you know exactly where you want your character to walk. In our case, this is what I set up. So the first thing you need to do is bake your animation sequence to your skeleton. To do that, you can right click on your skeleton within your sequencer, go over to bake animation sequence, choose the folder you want it to be baked in. I'm just gonna choose a content folder and click okay. How all this shows up is fine. You don't need to change anything, just click export. So now if I do control space to bring up my content browser and click right here, we now have our baked in animation sequence, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so now that we've baked our animation sequence, the next thing we can do is right click on it, go over to asset actions, and then go over to export. First thing that's gonna pop up is FBX file, which is correct. Pick the folder you want to export to, and then click save. Once you click save, you're gonna be prompted with this. Yours might look a little different than mine, so just make sure yours is copying exactly as mine is. Uh, you can change the bake materials input to disabled, that doesn't matter, uh, but the bake camera light, bake transforms, and then bake action animation, bake all. It might be hidden under advanced, so just make sure to do that drop down menu, and then these bottom three uh, click as well. Other than that, you can now click export. So now that you've exported that, you can now head over to Blender. So if you've never used Blender before, and this is your first time in Blender, this is exactly what you're gonna see the second you open it up. In this scenario, if you just want to do something really quickly on an untitled project, all you need to do is just click anywhere except for this main area. So I'm just gonna click right here, and now we're in the project. If you want, you can go over here to go down to file, save as, and then save your blend folder however you want. I will name mine water sim tut in case I have any issues. Uh, that way I can kind of recover the project and then click save as. Now that that is done, we have a few things in our project standard that you can get rid of. You can go over here. You can either click uh, delete or X to get rid of them. So now our scene is completely empty. The next thing you can do is go over to file, import, and then go to FBX, find your animation that you exported. In my case, it is not here, right here, and import. Once you import it, you're gonna see this right here, which is your character, and if you click play, the character will then start to move. Now, if you notice, it stops at 26. So if you want at the very bottom, if you go over to end, you can change this to one, two, six. That way it is just playing the part of the animation that is on the bottom. And again, to click play, I'm just hitting the space bar. So now that that is done, to move around your scene, you can do a middle click button, uh, which is usually your scroll to kind of move around. And then if you need to move even more than that, you can hold shift and then click that middle click button to kind of pan left and right. And that is how you're going to be moving around your scene. Now, the next part is very easy. All you need to do is go over to add, mesh, 
and click plane. Once you click plane, a plane will pop up in the very middle. And if you click S on your keyboard, it will now move over to scale where it uniformly scale up. What we want to do is try and mimic the size of the plane that we will need for our project, which is about this big. The next thing you can do is hit G and then Y from, in my case, to move it forward. So it's encompassing our characters full length of movement. I'm going to back up to make sure it is. And yes, it is. Now, the next thing I do want to preface this is the reason I chose Y is because that is the Y axis she's walking on. If your character for any reason uh, enters and it's on the X axis, that will be the green one. If you're ever not sure which axis it is, you can see the color coding right here. Z is up and down. Uh, y is this one and X is this one. So in your case, if you needed to move it uh, via, via the X axis, you would have hit G and then X, and it'll move on the X axis. And then if you want to undo, it's a normal undo, just control Z. So now that that is done, and we have everything in our scene, I'm going to now tab, click tab on our keyboard, right click, actually, let me go back just to make things clear. Make sure you've clicked on your plane and your plane is selected. Once that's done, hit tab on your keyboard and then right click and go to subdivide. At the very bottom, you should see this little piece right here. Click on that to get the full subdivide. And what you wanna do is make it as high number as possible. In our case, it will be 100. You can click out. Now, if you want, you can scroll back a bit. You can hold on your left click, drag all the way around to select the entire thing again. And then now you can right click again, click subdivide, and then add in maybe just do two and then click out. So now we've added a bunch of subdivisions, which are going to allow us to animate this wave effect onto this plane. You can click tab now to go back to the object mode. If you, if your tab isn't working and you won't leave, all you need to do is go up here to the top left and just switch to object mode. Now that you're in object mode, we need to add in our SIM. So to do that, you can go over here to physics. It is this little green, uh, sorry, blue kind of like planet circling around a planet. And you can click on dynamic paint. Once you click on dynamic paint, just hit add canvas and then go down here to surface type and switch it over to waves. And that is everything you need to do. Next, you can click on your actual character. And once you click on your character, click dynamic paint on your character switch it over to brush and add brush. That is it. Now you can go back to your plane, hit G and Z and bring it slightly up to the point where it would be on your character. Ooh, I just created another one where it would be on your character. If you're ever not sure, you can always transfer back to Unreal to kind of look. In our case, it looks like I'm having it just above the, uh, ankle and maybe just less than half of the shin. So back in Blender, I can now kind of adjust to see if I'm getting that. It looks like I am getting that, but we have one issue, which is you can tell these little boxes are kind of uh, looking a little ugly. So what you need to do is just right click on your plane and click shade smooth. Now it is nice and smooth. And if I click play, my character is now walking through the water and making plenty of ripples that look much more realistic than what we had in the first place. Now you can try and adjust this if needed. So you can click on your plane, go down under here and change the time scale and speed. Time scale will make it a little slower and do a nice little dragging effect and speed will also slow it down as well, making it look just a little more realistic. Okay, and now that you like the way your sim is looking, the next thing you can do is go click on your plane, drop down the cache, and then go over to bake. And what you wanna do is click bake. And now it will bake everything onto your plane. If you're not sure, you can always get rid of your character. 
Uh, I never understand why it does that, but it does that. And then if I click play, you'll still see the sim acting out on the plane. And that's how you know it's baked. The next thing you can do is export it. So you can click on your plane, go over to file, go down to export and do the .abc. Once you're on that, uh, mine's red because it's overriding. Yours won't be if you're not overriding. Uh, you have the frame start and end, which I adjusted uh, and is correct. After that, you can go down to here and make sure only selected objects is what we are exporting. So if you kept your character in your screen, you're not actually exporting your character. And then from there, all this looks good. But when it says subdivisions, make sure to click apply and then export. Now that that is exported, you can go over to Unreal and in Unreal, do control space to bring up the content browser, go over to import and then click on your export from Blender and open it up. Once it's opened up, yours will say static mesh right here. Switch it over to geom uh, geometry cache and then scroll down and where it says scale, make sure scale is 100, 100 and 100. The reason we're doing this is because I believe Unreal is based on meters and Blender is based on centimeters. I'm not fully remembering the transfer rate but basically they're in two different scales and you need to scale it up whenever you're bringing it into Unreal or whenever you're bringing something from Blender into Unreal. So now that that is done, I'm going to click import and now it is importing all the individual frames of the sim and is going to put it in one neat file for me. Okay, so now that our water sim has been imported, we can just drag and drop it into our scene. Um, you are not gonna see it right now it is because for some reason it's upside down. So let me just flip it over and then bring it a little higher. And you can see that the animation is starting right here. So let me just kind of spin it. Then I can bring it down and back to where our character starts, which is right there. And then now that we have it in our scene, the next thing we can do is click on it. So let's go over to add and let's type, go to actor to sequencer we can type in water and we can add in our water sim. Now that's added in, we can go over here to this plus sign and add in a geometry cache, which will show its actual movement. So now we have our full animation in our scene. Okay, so this is how it is currently looking right now. Now the next thing we can do is add in our water material to our scene. The only thing I do want to call out is if you did download the water material inside the water material, I have normal maps that are meant to be applied to that material. Now the normal maps usually give it a nice water texture, but since we are animating this water, there isn't really much need to have a normal map. So I have disconnected it from our normals since it is already simmed out it'll already have movement and fluctuations in the water itself. So having said that, uh, let me close that, add in the material, and then this is our final shot. And then now to show you the full render. Awesome, well, I hope you guys liked the tutorial. As always, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.